Mr. Speaker, off and on through the day, I've had the opportunity to sit and to listen to the debate on this opposition motion introduced by my colleague, the member of St. Albert Edmonton. Earlier, I heard a member from the government talk about raising the bar and taking pride in the, new, sorry, in the government's transparency and enhancement of their ethics. All of the government's speeches and questions highlighted the conduct of the ministers while taking pot <coughs> shots at the opposition parties, trying to diminish the hot water situation that they are currently in themselves. But let us be real here and have a real discussion. We are sitting in the House of Commons, all hiding behind the Lobbying Act and letters from the Ethics Commissioner. For a minute, let's pretend we're sitting at the kitchen table having coffee and cookies. Or for many people in my riding, they'd be sitting at the Tim Hortons coffee shop. What is it that Canadians see, and what is the appearance of ethics in this particular situation? Is this government truly trying to raise the bar? Then if they're trying to raise the bar, then let's have an open discussion and stop hiding behind the rules and regulations and just look at, through the one lens that we need to look at, which is the appearance of conflict. As many of you in this House know, I have asked the, the men, Minister several questions specifically on this situation, at which time I have yet no response from that Minister, each and every time the House Leader chooses to rise and answer for the Minister. So I have heard several times that the Minister has inquired to the Ethics Commissioner, but we all know in this House that it was after the fundraiser had become publicly aware, or the, the uh, public was made aware of it. I have heard members of the government ask opposition questions to take this outside and, in other terms, speak to it publicly without holding or hiding behind the members' privilege within this House. Earlier today, my colleague from St. Albert Edmonton reminded the government that we already have done this by publishing his own letters that he had written to the Ethics Commissioner. I stand here today speaking about ethics, not trying to be hide behind anything, speaking as a Canadian, and let's just be honest here and discuss this. Let's start with the simple facts. The member was a guest speaker at a Toronto law firm. This particular law firm has legal dealings with the federal government. An attendee at the event decided to deregister as a lobbyist the evening before the event, something that he had been a lobbyist for five years prior. The member attended the event and indicated that her speech focused on the path for Canada, and the event cost participants $500 a plate to attend. Now let's add the situation to the following. The member is the Justice Minister and the Attorney General of Canada. And I'm going to read specifically this. The Prime Minister has publicly and transparently provided mandate letters to all of his ministers and has indicated to all members that political fundraising or activities that uh, affect or do not look like the effect to appear at the exercise of official duties or the access of individuals or organ organizations to the government. So, sorry for splurging that. I hope you understand where I was going. These are just the facts, and I truly think at this point I should sit down because it's obviously clear that there has been a conflict of interest here. If we're looking at it through the, te the telescope or the lens of did this appear, we see a justice minister at a law firm. Does this appear? If anyone asked that question, they'd probably say, yeah, that seems like it does appear that way. So we're talking at the Canadian general public, does this or does this not appear to be a conflict of interest? The minister should apologize and pay back the money from this fundraiser. Nice and simple and an easy solution. As any member in this parliament, member in this chamber would have experienced, we're all members of parliament and we must stand up and be a pillar of our society and lead by example. And I think every member does their best to do so. Even I, a speedy driver, make sure I set the speedometer now so that I don't speed. Sounds very simple, but we need to be the leaders. We're needing to set that bar for what Canadians are supposed to be. Just because we're members of parliament doesn't mean that we have different privilege. When sitting in a restaurant, nobody comes up to me to ask how my meal is, but they want to know what's happening in Ottawa, what's going on up there. And I believe every other parliamentarian has the exact same things happen to them. It's just not in Elder Middlesex, London. Now, specifically with this member, we're talking about the Minister of Justice and the Attorney General for Canada at a law firm. I think they've had some common ground here for discussions. Do you really think they talked about the Raptors game, or do you think they were talking about when they were going to plant their spring gardens? These may be the common discussions at a sports bar or at a horticultural meeting, but we're talking about lawyers in the same room with one common background, which is justice. Does this fundraiser, or does this fundraiser with the Minister of Justice hold or held at a law firm, passed the sniff test. In other words, you look at the picture of milk in the morning, 
It's curdled and it's lumpy. Then you proceed to smell it, assuming the milk has gone bad. Even the date on the package shows that it has expired. If the Minister of Justice already thought it might be an issue with the Ethics Commissioner, why did she have to go and ask? That clear. Because it was obviously potentially a conflict of interest, going back to the appearance of an interest. So let's go back to the simple question. If the Minister of Justice needed to take this to the Ethics Commissioner, would it not appear that there be, had been a potential conflict of interest? The key question on all of this is, did the political fundraiser activities or considerations affect or appear to affect the exercise of the Minister's official duties or the access of individuals or in organizations to the Minister? This truly is a simple yes or no answer, but instead we find ourselves debating this on the floor today because the minister and the government to refuse to live up by their own ethical standards. And I, as I will state, as many others have done so uh, from our caucus, the Honourable Shelley Glover, following a fundraiser that she found out had a stakeholder under her portfolio, was in attendance. She took this to the Ethics Commissioner, then paid the money back. It's that simple. There is a fix, an easy solution here. As I indicated throughout this discussion, the government has repeatedly responded to all questions by pointing the finger back at any previous wrongdoings. Wrongdoings that in the previous government's case resulted from either the money being paid back or being removed from the caucus. I already anticipate the questions coming from the government asking me to articulate what our government has done to rectify this issue. One of the first bills that we put back in 2006 was to introduce the Federal Accountability Act. It removed the donations from big business and unions and the idea that you could buy the person's vote. Now Canadians can only spend money from their own pocket and pocketbooks to make those donations up to 1525. Earlier today, I was advised by Dr. Ted Hewitt, a longtime person from the City of London, that I had a positive and forward-focused individual, or that I was a positive and forward-focused individual. I hope that the government today, during this debate, can adopt this type of personality and stop chucking mud at all the opposition parties and just do the right thing. Take the words of the Prime Minister when he campaigned on open and transparent government, let the light shine on this issue and take it for exactly what it is, instead of hiding behind the legal jargon, jargon and the code of ethics. Rise above and do what your Prime Minister asked you to do. Be honest to Canadians. Earlier today, when discussing this speech with my staff, Scott attributed this to a simple situation. Simply, this ethic issue is like a difference between a circus and a zoo. Why do you pay so much to go to the fantastic circus performance and how much less to go to a simple zoo? Plainly, it's because we know that the animals at the circus can do incredible things. We know that those highly trained animals can jump, leap, and fly, much more entertaining than a sleepy lion at the zoo. We also know that these attendees that went to this event with the minister recognized she was one of those who could actually make differences in her high-profile job that she could make a difference. She was a powerful, high-profile individual in the Government of Canada. Let's not forget that. We're just acting like it's a simple thing. Finally, the Minister of Justice should not accept the funds from those who have had vested interest in her, in her incredibly important portfolio. Even if she was simply attending the fundraiser as an MP, simply, something clearly seems wrong that appearance of a conflict of interest is definitely evident in this activity. Before I finish, I would like to ask, many members on the other side have offered the statements for the financials showing this fundraiser. I would ask that you come over here and show me why I cannot find it on my iPad. Yes, once in a while I'll say I just can't find it, but I do not believe that those records are yet available. If you can find it, please just show me. We are telling Canadians that it's available. I can't find it, so if I can't find it, many Canadians would not find it. So I invite you to come and let's have coffee. You show me where I can find it and then I will thank you. Thank you very much for your time. I, I'm afraid as Speaker I can't come down and show you, but I'm sure you meant everyone else, so if you don't mind. Thank you. That sounds great. Question and commentaire, l'honorable député de Saint Boniface, Saint Thank you, thank you so much, uh, Monsieur le Président. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I'm having a hard time believing that uh, the honourable member and her party are serious, uh, notwithstanding the fact that the Justice Minister has a uh, a ruling in writing from the Ethics Commissioner that uh, no breach of ethics occurred, that no conflict of uh, interest occurred. And uh, notwithstanding the fact that uh, the honourable member represents a party who uh, were guilty on the in and out scandal, who were guilty on the uh, robocall scandal, 
uh, who blatantly tried to suppress the vote through the conflict of uh, the Unfair Elections Act, uh, who had the Prime Minister's uh, former Chief of Staff give a $100,000 check to, uh, to Mr. Duffy, who had the Prime Minister's uh, Parliamentary Secretary, who actually went to jail in shackles, was let out in shackles, Mr. Speaker. This is the party that's guilty of everything that I've mentioned. So my question to the Honourable Member is, do you actually believe that Canadians feel you have any credibility whatsoever when you talk about ethical scandals? Once again, I just want to remind the members that they are speaking through the Speaker and not directly to each other, otherwise uh, this could turn into a real uh, hodgepodge of things. The Honourable Member for Elgin, Middlesex, London. This is a very, very easy question for me. I am 100 percent serious. Thank you for the question. Questions and comments? L'honorable député de, excusez, c'est Beauport, Côte de Beaupré, l'île d'Orléans, Charlevoix. Monsieur le Président, je n'en reviens pas d'entendre par parler euh, mes amis euh, libéra libérales avec euh, ce que je viens d'entendre. Je leur ferai remarquer qu'ils doivent encore 40 millions à la population canadienne. Ceci étant dit, j'aimerais savoir. Je, 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 je suis tout à fait d'accord avec euh, ma consoeur ici. Est-ce que, d'après elle, la ministre de la Justice a eu apparence et devrait-elle rembourser les Canadiens? For Elgin, Middlesex, London. Well, thank you very much for that question. I 100% believe I 100% believe that the justice minister should be putting that money back to the people that have attended. Absolutely. When we talk about this, I'm just going to remind everybody in here. When we were all elected, we were elected on with some of the people from the opposite side, sunny ways. I came here with the idea of working with others, and I can tell you I have been heckled today by all the backbenchers of the opposite of the opposite side. I have a gentleman here who did not listen to my 10-minute speech. And yes, I sit here and I listen and I almost laugh because the hypocrisy drives me crazy. If we're going to sit here and actually do things for parliamentarians and do things for Canadians, please live with what you're saying. And as I said, are, are, is, this, is this group, is this government going to be doing these sunny ways? I can tell you as, my, as the Member of Parliament, I sit here and think, why do we need to discuss this? You're absolutely right. Why are we seriously discussing this? And it's because the transparency, the accountability and the truth to Canadians that our, this Prime Minister promised us is not being upheld. We have time for a very short question. The Honourable Member for uh, Scarborough Agent Court. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I find it kind of surreal that I'm even rising today because this, today's debate and the issues that have been raised recently kind of remind me of the Shakespeare comedic play, Much Ado About Nothing. But I, I take the point that the, member, the members opposite, including uh, the member for Elgin Middlesex London, is raising is, is the appearance of a conflict. And I want to get specifically to that, which is the nature of my question. And if, if we're going to apply the same standard that, that they're seeking to apply to us, would the member also be willing to go back through 10 years of records when they served in government to go through each of their particular members of executive council to see whether, in fact, uh, they had stakeholders uh, that were attending their fundraisers when ministers were attending as the guest speaker and return the money to Canadians as well where there is that appearance. The Honourable Member for Elgin, Middlesex, London. You know, I truly do appreciate that question because I think, as all parliamentarians, we need to move forward in a more positive manner for Canada. We sit there and we talk about what the NDP do. We talk about the $40 billion that you have done. We talk about the scandals on this side. I don't think anybody is perfect in this House, but I believe that from this day forward or from October 19th forward, we should. We are new, the new government of Canada. I'm not. We're the government of Canada. We are the members of Parliament. So everybody wants to sit there and keep on throwing mud. How about we rise above? If this is what our Prime Minister is asking us, all members of Parliament should rise above and we should live to those standards and see it from the ministers themselves as well.